Welcome to The Advocate, your Sunday reminder that important conversations are among the necessary tools for a sinner society. I'll be talking about the beauty in Nigeria and foreign influences. Titi Lokwe Ibilola will be talking about the negative effects of debt. Tolu Moyon will be talking about Newton's law of polities. Each one must move one to end voter apathy. Today, expect interesting and educational conversation we will be right back after the break. The beauty in Nigeria and foreign influences. Without doubt, Nigeria is one of the most blessed nations in the world, with the area of human capital and natural resources spread across each part of the country. It is safe to say that Nigeria has the potential to be self-sufficient, compete favorably with the biggest nations and assume true the true position of being the giant of Africa. However, the reality we have today simply shows a great extent of underutilization of our God-given resources. It is crystal clear that we lack the necessary leadership and system that can help us adequately manage our dear resources. The willpower or lack of it in people at the hands of affairs shows a deliberate negligence with situation deteriorating year after year. Social and mainstream media have also contributed to image damage affecting the country's expected development. Nigerians are now being judged by what foreigners see and read through the media. Today, media has eased means of communication which should be of an advantage to us, promoting our values and culture. But then, what trends most in media today are things that shouldn't. We talk too much without acting, and most times we project ourselves in bad light. We are currently underutilizing the comparative economic advantages in our diversity, while allowing sentiments of tribe and religion to reshape our thinking and decision making. Politicians are taking advantage of these lines of sentiment, why most business capitalists in Nigeria today are only focused on using people other than developing them. We need to start seeing beauty in ourselves, promote it by acting in its direction. By then, we will for recover from our lost glory. What do you think? So the part of projecting ourselves mm -hmm. out there in the wrong light is so true. I see a lot of times some things that should not end up on social media, end up on social media. And there's nothing, there's no check. There's no one checking to say, should this even go to the public space? I don't know how we're going to curb that. I don't know what kind of advocacy we need to do to advocate against that. But it's something we need to look at. Yeah. Um... About, about 15 or 20 years ago, I read a book called The Burden of Freedom. Mm. And, you know, basically what it was saying is sometimes, you know, not sometimes, actually freedom is responsibility, mm. right? We many times feel like, you know, freedom is, gives us, you know, the power to do less. It actually gives you power to do more. Mm. And it's supposed to actually make you reflect more. So think about the man in jail and the man on the street. The man in jail is told when to eat, when to drink, when to sleep, when to wake up, when to go out. Mm -hmm. But the guy outside has the right to make a thousand decisions. That's exactly the problem that we have. The <laughs> problem is we have not seen our freedom as a responsibility. Because if we did, then many of the things that we are doing, you know, we, we probably won't do. do. Right? Exactly. And I'm saying, and you know, you know, there's that proverb that um, until the antelope tells the story, you know, the story always favors the hunter. Mm, mm, mm. Right, is is problematic. So, so should we say it's more it's more like a, a knowledge gap space where people don't even know what it takes to be free. You know the importance of freedom because when when you look at it compared to some some developed countries, even the United States of America, and that we all want to like Jaqua go go to. Mm. You see a lot of crime, a lot of mass shooting, but doesn't meet the media. Yeah. So my, my concern is beyond the social media as well. Our our media outfits, we've seen them promoting, uh, the tolerating uh, messages 
that actually affect our brand. Mm -hmm. I can give you an example. Mm -hmm. Take for example, we have a transportation system. You agree with me that before the, the attack on Abuja Kad Kaduna railway train, a lot of people could actually live in Kaduna and work in Abuja, mm -hmm. and they go seamlessly, right? Yeah. Yeah. We can see the same thing in uh, Lagos, Ibadan. But there is not much media shouts yeah. about it, right? But when you see a first attack, like the, the attack or whatever, you see it, it goes for weeks, for months, you know? That's exactly what I'm talking about. So when I, when I was saying that on the, the antelope learns to tell a story, the story always favors the hunter. Let me give you a practical example, real-life example. A few months ago, about 10 or 11 months ago, um, I was invited by you know, a set of people to help with some of their media work. And I wanted to, one of the issues they had was insecurity. Mm. So clearly I wanted to do some research. And I did some research. So what I tried to do is to benchmark, you know, where have people have insecurity issues before? What do they do with it? And I did some research. Guess what? Wow. I found that in America, if you Google insecurity in America, you will not find anything. Wow. wow. Yes, you can try it. Mm. They made sure they were so deliberate. So you see public safety instead, instead of insecurity. Mm. If you Google a hundred times insecurity in America, 90% of the time you'll find public safety. Wow. What does that tell you? The antelope has learned to tell the story. Mm. They mm. decided by themselves. You think there's no insecurity in America? You think oh, America is the safest place on earth? Of course not. But they decided by themselves that they will not be associated with that word. Mm. And guess what? The same thing. Insecurity, public safety, the same thing. But decided mm. you don't you know, use negative words on them. You don't use negative lexicon. So that's exactly what I'm saying. Mm. So you have those issues, mm. but the way mm. you even portray those issues exactly goes a so lot. I, I think in, in from, from, from what you said is is, is a bit of a culture and thinking where uh, Americans don't actually ask what does the country have for me. They think of what do I have for the country. So if you have that mindset of say what I want to do, yes, errors has been made, mistakes has been done, uh, as has burned. But what's the way forward? How do we solve it? I think if we engineer our thinking to an aspect of how do we solve this problem? Yes, there is a noise that's also happened. How can we in this community come together and say what can we do? Instead of throwing blame games, your yeah. blame doesn't actually doesn't change anything. anything. Yeah. You understand? So let us start thinking of what do we have for Nigeria? Absolutely. What do we yeah. have? Because Nigeria, Nigeria is, I can say, the richest country in the world. Because we have, when it comes to human resources, yeah, we are we are natural number one. Resources. Natural resources, we are having the best. Yeah. You know, population. Human capital. You know, yeah. when you want to People. have any go business, yes. why do you think foreign investment are coming to Nigeria? Yeah. It can turn around your investment over time. Absolutely. You know, yes. Nigeria is actually a great country. One I think of the we problems should we have, be thinking. Sorry, it's, it's what I call the PhD syndrome, the pulling down syndrome. Okay. All right. The average Nigerian does not want the average Nigerian to succeed. Mm. Mm. It's unfortunate, but wow. it's the truth. It's wow. the PhD syndrome. You know, everybody just wants to pull everybody down. Is that, um, what's that? Is there that something else it's called? You know, if you put crabs, if you put 50 crabs in a, in a bucket, mm. none of them will get out. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. every, the, every other crab will put the other crab down. Yeah. yeah. But we are, we are so, actually doing ourselves. And, so, yes. so, and we need yeah. to start a serious cultural and mental reorientation for people to realize that the fact that you have. There's something called the Commonwealth. Mm. Go and Google what the Commonwealth is. Mm. What it means is the richer I get, the richer you get. Go and ask the Jews how they did it. Exactly. It's the same you know? thing that South Africans did with exactly. the Ubuntu. Yes. yes. With the Ubuntu, yes. yes. So if, if you are looking at that, it also boils back to capitalists. Where I think we have to have our capitalists re-engineering their thinking of using people. Because if you, my money can get me anything I want. Mm. I think we need to start getting ourselves out from their shackles. The same way that the Gen Zs have changed the workplace now, mm -hmm. where they don't take bullying in the workplace, how our mothers, our fathers took it. Mm -hmm. They have now liberated themselves from that. It's the same way we as Nigerians need to do that. If the capitalists, how many capitalists are there in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. We need to liberate ourselves and take, our, take charge Mm. and say we're not going to continue to toe the line of these people. We're not mm. going to continue to do what they want us to do. Mm. Yeah. Let's mm. change it, yeah. which is what we're hoping mm. to hear more. <laughs> so just yeah. before, and, I, and I hope we can do that. <laughs> exactly. Because, you know, the truth is that hunger is real. Yeah. True. Right? 
Hunger is real. So you say to someone, you know, don't go to work for one. Because it's, it, it boils down to what I'm going to talk about as well. When you talk about boycotts, how to actually cause social change. Mm -hmm. It will require boycotts, sit-ins, all those things. But yeah. somebody sits for one week. I mean, look at ASU, for instance. Mm. This is the longest they've been on track for a long time. Yeah. But they're sticking to it, and I support them. In as much as I'm not very happy about trying sitting at home. At some point, we must get this thing by force. We mm. must decide that you're wasting so much money on the legislature. Wasting so much money on, you know, the House of Reps, the the, the House of Assembly. But the trainer at home. So, you so know, maybe not their children. Uh, 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 exactly. So yeah. on, on the aspect of us, I might a little bit have a different sentiment Please. to that because like when, we, when, when we look into the NUC, who are those who are constituting the AUC? Mm -hmm. The same ASU people, mm -hmm. right? Who are lecturers? Mm -hmm. Who are the ones formulating laws of accreditation of courses and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. The same set of people. Mm -hmm. But they are accrediting fake details. Like, say you have equipment that are not existing, that are borrowed. Mm -hmm. And you are still requesting for an allowance for those extra that you, you know, it is not justifiable by the time you look at the reality that we have on the table. Yes. But not less, I think there is a, a need for a complete overhaul of the system, uh -huh. right? Yes. And the government also has a role to play to uh -huh. ensure that. But I, for me, I, I like to be in, on in a the, balance. In the scheme of, balance, I, I agree with right. you, but in the scheme of things, these things you are referring to is, is all the way. It's from Aspo Rock. To this, to this studio we are sitting in. To there is no place where there are no resources that are located to things. Do you know how much they used to cut grass in Asoro? Yes. Do you know how much they used to so, buy but medicine they get, but that, in the hospital? Yeah, in but that money goes, it goes to cut so, the grass. So, so, so just, just to go, I think we need to start believing ourselves, right, mm -hmm. and uh, portray ourselves in a good image, even when we are outside the country, because mm -hmm. you have Absolutely. people who are talking bad. When you land on the airport, they say you're a Nigerian, they say all sorts of things. You should be able to stand for your own country and say, no, I'm in Nigeria and I'm a decent person. Because I committed, someone committed crime doesn't stigmatize me to be a bad person. Yeah. You know, there are, there are laws and order. Please, if someone does bad, please exercise your law, but don't mm -hmm. use that one to, 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 to penalize yeah. others. So Absolutely. thank you. Titi Lokwe Ibilola will be talking about the negative effects of debt. Stay with us.